<clears throat> Morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can we help you this room? I, I have a reservation tour at 10. Yep, I'll get you checked in. Thank you. Any trouble with Mark? Yeah. Actually, I came from Thailand. Before that, I came from South Korea. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. So, what's the name that's done there? It's Taemin Kim. Perfect. This is your lanyard here. Okay, and um, so if you pop that on, your host Neve, she'll come and introduce herself. She's just around the back with guests at the moment. You'll start with a tea or a coffee and a freshly baked scone, and then you will do your distillery tour with a taste of coffee. Okay, Thank you. Great. Um, so just come back in this area in the next kind of five minutes. Okay, I just look around. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Discovery. Yes, I do. Fantastic. I do. My name is Neve. Um, so I'll be your guide today. I'll be looking after you. From South Korea. Oh wow! Are you in Scotland for long? It's my sixth day. Danielle, we'll get you seated for your tea or your coffee. And um, when you're finished, we're going to head out on tour. We have another six people joining us. Okay. Oh well, do you want to take all swap roles? No problem. <laughs> no worries, I'll take you round. <laughs> Did you get your phone? Yeah, I got it. Parking lot is a little far away. Are you a big whiskey drinker? I'm a fan. You're a fan? Yes. Yeah, I don't drink too much. Oh okay. So I, I don't need to convert you to a whiskey drinker today. You're already one. 
So I'll get you seated at this table just here. Okay. Um, we have a few more behind you. We have another couple joining our tour today as well. Okay. When everybody has finished their tea and coffee, we will head out on our tour okay. and take the opportunity to go to the toilet before our tour as well. Okay. Thank so just you. on the back wall there. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah. Morning. Can I get you a tea or coffee? Yeah. I, I will have some coffee, please. Coffee? Do you like just um, a American black coffee or cappuccino, latte? Black, thank you. Black, yeah. that's no problem. And would you like a scone as well? A scone? Yeah, yeah, thank you. It took three in case you were bleeding. Amazing, so we're going to head round to the front of the visitor centre. We're going to head inside the whiskey wall and that's where we're going to start today. That's it. Did you enjoy your coffee and your scones? Yes. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Well, how long are you spending in Scotland? Till Friday. Till Friday. And have you been here for a few days already? Yes. Like oh, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. And are you just staying in Scotland or are you going down to England as well? The, the, we spent two days in London. Spent two days in London. Oh, no. Thank you. What you head into the table and just down to the bottom there? Here. So this here is our dual wall um, or our archive section and this is where we're going to begin our tour today. So we're going to begin our tour with a little bit of history and then we're going to work our way through some of the bottles and some of the different artifacts in our wall. Now please, um, throughout the whole tour, feel free to take as many photos as you would like um, and don't hesitate to jump in with any questions at any point as well. If anything catches your eye, don't hesitate to point it out and, and ask me, you know, what is it? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> So we're going to begin with a little bit of history. So our estate here dates all the way back to the 14th century. And in this time, all we had was a church, a mill and a farm. Now the church itself was now burned down. However, a graveyard does remain on site. Now the estate was passed down through many hands over the years. And in 1700 was gifted to a gentleman called Captain John Grant for the role that he played in the Jacobite Rebellion. And Captain John Grant decided to use this land to build a holiday home for himself and his wife. So he built this home called Easter Elkie's House. Now you may have noticed it at the bottom of the path as you walked up today. Yeah, if not, it does feature on the lanyards that you're wearing as well. With a little house in the front there. So it was built in 1700 as a holiday home for himself and his wife. And they owned it until 1759 when it was bought over by the 5th Earl of Seafield. And the 5th Earl of Seafield bought the house and the whole estate. So the estate was a little bit too large for the Seafield family to look after by themselves. So they leased out some of the land to local farmers. Now, one of these farmers was a gentleman called Alexander Reed, who was granted a legal license to distill in 1824. And this is the year that is featured on all of our bottles. We do, however, believe he was doing a bit of illicit distilling before this. Not sure. Yeah. Not sure. <laughs> That's what I'm not sure. Yeah. It's very common in the area at the time. <laughs> So you may have noticed we've gotten to this point in our history without a Mr. McCallan. Mm. Now this is because we believe the name McCallan actually comes from two words. So the first being mag, meaning fertile land in Gaelic, and the second being Ellen. So the church that I mentioned way back in the 14th century was called the Church of St. Philian. Now Philian was shortened to Ellen, mag and Ellen put together to eventually form McCallan. So that's where we believe our name came from. So, McCallum was passed down through many hands over the years. In 1892, we were bought over by a gentleman called Roderick Kemp. Now, Roderick Kemp was an ex-wine merchant. He also used to own 50% of Talisker Distillery on the Isle of Skye. Yeah, however, he sold a share of Talisker, came to Speyside and bought over McCallum. Now, we're very glad that he did, because Roderick Kemp is considered the founding father of the modern-day McCallum because he was the one who introduced our sherry oak season casks to our whisky. So of course our sherry oak cask is something that makes us unique today, gives us a lot of our distinct colours, flavours and aromas, especially when 95% of the Scotch whisky industry use American bourbon casks. 
or Chevy Casca release of it, I think it's in that small 5% there. Now when Kemp died in 1909, the distillery and the estate was passed down through his family, and it remained family run until 1996 when we were bought over by Highland Distillers, and then in 1999 the Edrington Group bought a majority share, and they are our current owners today. So we ran production in our old distillery until December of 2017, shut down, took the Christmas break, and started production in our new distillery here in January 2018. So we've only been producing in our new distillery here for about four and a half years. So nothing that we're going to drink today is actually going to be from this new distillery as of yet, none of it's been bottled. <laughs> but that, yeah. <laughs> so that was a very quick overview of our history. We are going to hear some of those names again throughout the tour, but is the history side of things kind of makes sense to everyone so far? Yeah. yeah. Have you got anything big planned for the 200th anniversary? Um, not that I know of. I mean, I know there's definitely plans already in the works, but I'm not sure what we're, what we're going to do right now. But it's going to be a lot of distilleries, 200 year anniversary. So the requirement to legalise um, your distilling process didn't come in until 1823. So most distilleries leased licensed in 1824. Right. So like Glenlivet, Glenfinnick, and I think Strathaila as well, they're all going to have their 200 year anniversaries in 2024. Yeah. So it's a good time to come up to Speyside, yeah. There'll be lots of other celebrations and parties going on. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So we're going to head on to speak about some of the bottles from the art packs in our one. Like I said, if anything catches your eye, don't hesitate to jump in and ask. So I always like... Bottles up there, it says Glasgow on the bottom, is that...? So it would just be where it was bottled. Ah, so you'll see, as we head up as well, there's lots of different names on them. So there's like R.H. Thompson Leaf, Campbell Open King, and Gordon McVail. Oh. These were all just different bottlers yeah. that we used over the years. Right. Okay. So I like to start with this book right at the very beginning here. So this here was Roger Kemp's, and this is what he used to draft his letters. On the right is a letter he wrote to his barley supplier at the time, and you can still kind of read the right in there that says, this barley is so rubbish, it's not even fit for feeding purposes. <laughs> so he wasn't even going to give it to his cows. You know, he only wanted the best of the best quality for his whiskey, and he definitely wasn't shy to say that either. <laughs> and then down here we've got another book from Roger Kemp. This one here speaks about the sherry oak casks that he purchased, when they were filled, and additional notes about them as well. And then the bottles down the side of the wall are amongst the oldest that we have in our collection. Have a closer look at these two books, a closer look at the bottles from the early time period, and when everyone's ready, we can continue on up the wall. Thank you. So you probably won't recognise many of the bottles on the wall here, but as we continue on up, you'll start to recognise some of the newer ones. Does empty spaces mean anything? So we're hoping that we can maybe get some more bottles to add to our collection, so less on empty spaces for these ones. Mm -hmm. so, Can you know which ones are missing? Mm, I don't personally know, mm -hmm. um, but it's possible that they are looking for some in between. Date-wise, I guess, they'll, they'll be gaps. Yeah, so these ones, so these would have all held real Macau at one point, although they are empty now. The oldest one in our wall is that large one right there, and it dates only about 1848. Mm -hmm. We do have one from 1841, but it's a wee bit restored at the moment. But it'll join our collection. We've got a replica of it further up the wall that I can point out for you. So, yeah, these labels are in good condition for a you know, yeah. yeah, they have been restored. Oh. Yeah, so we've kind of restored them to kind of what they would have looked like then. Um, You didn't have to say what print they were in, in those days. No, the, the walls would have been stripped because I could possibly could be on the back as well. Oh, yeah, it could be, yes. But yeah, they're licensed in the laundry, stripped on the back. The ones above them. That's a lucky thing. I think that was about half a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> We need to get further up, we've got a six-litre bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and they say it's a million of rockets. No. So we're looking for it. No, the rockets is up here. Is it? Yeah, there's a rockets about three miles up the road. Yeah. 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 Have you got a rockets? There's the, yeah, in front. Because uh, there's the Glen Road. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glen Okay, and then I see that so at that point there's McCallum and Talisker distilleries in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to be taking out the ball. I like the head of this bottle in the case next because it's such a contrast that of course all the older style one can have seen. So this one here was released to mark the opening of our new distillery and at the time it's the oldest whiskey we'd ever produced. So this here is a 72 year old and a beautiful Genesis Lalique decanter. Of course Lalique being your French crystal brand. Now the bottle is designed to mimic the humps in our roof which is why it has that beautiful kind of undulation around it. Yeah. And then the Lalique stopper on the side looks like the inside of our roof with all the wooden panels. So there was only 600 of these ever made. So I'm afraid we won't be trying this one for no. today. <laughs> Mm, 600. So I assume, is that empty? I mean, that's just called a filter, is that actually a... That one's our empty kind of. <laughs> Oh, the one that we've got in the boutique is real. And it comes, I don't know if you've seen it um, earlier, it comes in a beautiful, like, oh, hand yes, crafted gold yeah. case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that one's real. Yeah. You're wasted. But you're going to step off the anyway. No. <laughs> We've got one open at the bar if you'd like to try it. But. <laughs> so we're going to continue on up. Now, I don't know how good everybody's Scottish is, but in this newspaper, right at the bottom, we have a poem all in Scots, all about the health benefits of drinking Macallan. So this was put into the Times on the 27th of March, 1980. So you can give it a read just down the bottom there. For those whose Scots maybe aren't quite there, it um, basically tells you it stops your hands from shaking, your stomach from wombling, your teeth from chattering. <laughs> Keeps you warm and merry is the kind of gist of it. <laughs> Don't know if you'd be allowed to that on a newspaper now, um, but no, back then I definitely were. It sounds like my gas room. It says it's wrong, but it was a glass of whiskey. You working out before then? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite sneaky the way they did it as well, because the people that they wanted to attract to Macallan were the people that would do the crossword mm -hmm. on the paper. That's why it's right yeah. next to the crossword. Yeah. 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 So as we can, yeah, definitely. Um, as we continue on up the wall, we're probably going to start to recognise the bottle a little bit more. They get a little bit more familiar. You've maybe drank some as well. If you have a look, just on the way to the toilets on the wall, um, there's a lot of our old like, marketing adverts. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them was like a crossword. I, can't, I think it was 1982, the crossword. And the hint was the malt. And the answer was Macallan, because it's the Macallan, the malt. Yes, yeah, so we were in the, we were in the yeah. crossword at one point as well. <laughs> we're going to continue on up. This is a replica bottle I mentioned from 1841. So it's a little restored at the moment. Um, but when it comes back, it'll become the oldest one on our wall. This is kind of what it would have looked like in its prime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but another one I always like to point out that not many people have seen before is this seven year old here. So, what's really interesting about this one is it was released back in the 80s and it was originally only, only released for the Italian market, so it wasn't available here in the UK. So, it was sold to um, some Italian wine merchants. And it was all about getting whiskey into Italy. They were big wine drinkers. They wanted to get a whiskey market over there. So they sold them this special, special selection seven-year-old um, just for them. It's also quite interesting because it's a seven-year-old. You know, it's a very young whiskey. It's not something you really see. You can tell by the color of the whiskey, it's really dark. So there's definitely older whiskey in there as well. So it must have been a really exceptional seven-year-old cask that our whiskey maker at the time decided to put it in alongside the rest of the casks. So of course you have to put the youngest age on the bottle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of our Scotch whisky laws. So you have to put the youngest age whisky on the bottle. That's interesting. Yeah, so there's always likely to be older whisky in there as well. Oh, 100%. Yeah. If yeah. you ever have a 12 year old, there's definitely going to be older whisky in there as well. 12 is the minimum, yeah. minimum that it can be. And was it successful in the Italian market? I believe it was, yeah. We've been told it's a really nice whisky mm -hmm. as well. Um, although I don't know the tasting notes for it because the bat's all in Italian. <laughs> I don't speak any Italian. 
You can do that. So we're going to continue on up our wall. Oh, you see the ten pound note there? <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's how our distill. That's how our old the stills were displayed in our old distillery. That kind of line. So we're going to continue on to this one here because this, of course, is a very eye-catching bottle. Um, and this one here is our Macallan M in a six-liter Lalique decanter. So one of these sold at a charity auction in Hong Kong in 2014 for 628,000 US dollars. <laughs> there was only five of these ever made. We do offer smaller 70 scallions of these in our boutique. They're a little bit easier to pour a dram from. Yeah. Mm. I think I'd be, I don't think I could lift it. No. Like four from I've never tried. <laughs> you should use a straw. So as we continue up the wall, I'm going to ask if everyone can have a look at the bottles right down the bottom. You might be able to find your birth year on there as well. Some of you look a little bit young. Yeah. 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 My one's not quite there yet either. No, they're not They've not got ours. Oh, okay, there is some missing. Yeah, the next one. Yeah, it's <laughs> This difference is also like a special. And why you put there? You have to What's the special. difference? These ones are all from the leak. Um, and so there's six in total, and they're supposed to represent the six pillars of Macallan. So it's the six things that make Macallan unique. So all these bottles down the bottom are part of our fine and rare collection. So this is the largest vintage whiskey collection in the world. And this aims to showcase the very best whiskey from each year. So each bottle is from an individual cask. So you can see some of them, like your 70s here, are really dark. So it's very likely that they've came from European casks because European oak's very dark in colour. It's going to give you dark colours and flavours to your whisky. And then your lighter ones, such as your 1968s here, it's likely that they came from American oak casks because American oak's very light in colour. It's going to give you lighter colours and lighter flavours, sweeter flavours to your whisky. So if there's a missing time period, like there's nothing between 55 and 58, does that mean the whisky from that... Those years wasn't as good. Yeah, it's very possible they just didn't find a cast that kind of stood mm -hmm. out to them as being good enough for that, for this collection. Mm -hmm. So we did also produce a 1926 version of our fine and rare. It was distilled in 1926, bottled in 1986. So it was 60 years old, it was the oldest one in the entire collection. There was only 40 bottles made. Now 12 of them were commissioned to Valerie Wadami, an Italian pop artist to design and 12 to Sir Peter Blake, the British collage artist. Mm -hmm. You may have heard of Sir Peter Blake before. Mm -hmm. If not, he also designed the album cover for the Beatles album, mm -hmm. Sergeant Pepper and the Lonely Hearts Club. We've done a few collaborations with him since as well. Now, one of our dummy bottles broke the world record in 1987 for the most expensive spirit ever sold at auction, and it went for 5,000 pounds. Now, one of our 1926 bottles, again, went to auction in 2019, breaking the world record. This time, however, it sold for 1.45 million. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can see how over the kind of 32 years there is a value for those entries. So we know that one of the 40 bottles has definitely been drunk by a gentleman with some of his friends. We also know that another one was destroyed in an earthquake in Asia. Mm, yeah. We we're not 100% sure where all the bottles are. So we have, I believe it's number one of 12 and number three of 12, um, but those we don't know where they all are. And then they have, and then there's some bottles that look like this as well. So, yeah. so if you've got one of these in your loft, I'd keep your hands on it. Mm. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> got a size on check. Check at the back of that father's cocktail cabinet. I wouldn't be putting this on that cocktail. No, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so as we continue up the wall, I always like to point out these ones as well. So these are all our royal bottle lines. I quite like these. I really quite like the design on them. A lot of effort, thoughts gone into them. So you've got one for the marriage of Charles and Diana. You've got the Queen's Day Jubilee, your marriage of Kate and William, and your 60th anniversary, the coronation of the Queen there as well. So I just quite like these ones. They're something a little bit different. 
Do you know how the collaboration with Lenny came about? I'm not 100% sure how it came about, um, but I imagine it was because Lalique have any kind of similar values um, and us and similar thought process that goes into their craftsmanship. So they actually throw out about 95% of the crystals that they make because they have to be absolute perfection. So they're aiming for you know the best of the best quality for everything that they do. And it takes quite a while for them to make all. It takes a couple of days for them to make all their decanters and things as well. Mm -hmm. so because there's so much work goes into them. And then as we continue on up the wall, this last section here is our collaboration section. So here at McAllen, we collaborate with lots of different artists, brands and photographers um, and people to create our whiskey and our packaging. For this section, I'll let you have a little look yourself. You might recognise some of the names and some of the bottles. If you've got any questions about any of them, just give me a shout and I'll talk you through some of them in just a moment. But have a little look, see if you recognise any of the names, um, any of the people, and let me know. Those ones are really nice, aren't they? So, have you seen these ones before? Yeah. So, these ones are part of our edition series. So, each bottle aims to kind of showcase because they are set for the whiskey. Yeah. There's a few yeah. 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 So, the first one is just about whiskey in general, and it's made by the Lakers Local Bar. Edition number two is the collaboration with the Walker Brothers. So, we have a Oh, do you get it? So it's all about the taste. So this is really nice whiskey, focus on the taste. Edition number three, the collaboration with Roja Dove, the perfume maker. So it's all about smell of whiskey. Edition number four, the collaboration with the architects of this building. And so it's all about the craftsmanship, the innovation of whiskey, who's made. Edition number five is a collaboration with Pan's Moon Colour Company, it's all about the colour of whiskey. And this is actually a unique shade of purple made for us. And we have to the to it, so no other company can use it on their market. And then edition number six is a collaboration with Hardy Cushing Gear Brand and the Market Sun and Cushing Trust, and all about the River Spray and all the water to the new production. So it's like what I've got the word through, and some of the profits from this one will back into the Atlantic Sun and Cushing Trust as well. That's very clever. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen these ones before? Yes. Have you tried to double cast before? No. I like the double cast range. Mm. It's just, it's quite smooth and it's a little bit different than traditional Macallan. How about yourself? Have you seen some of these bottles before? My first single malt whiskey was Macallan double cast 12 years ago. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. It, that's the one that put into the single malt whiskey. Oh, is it? That's the one that got you into drinking single malt. Oh, fantastic. And then up here, we have more of our collaborations with Sir Peter Blake. So we've got all these bottles here. And then the one at the very end is one that we did with him 10 years ago. That's my favourite one in the whole bottle. <laughs> so it was to celebrate his 80th birthday. So there's eight bottles all representing a different decade of his life. That's gorgeous. He actually turns 90 this year. Yeah, so 10 years ago. But this one here, this was the third and the final collaboration that we're going to do with them. And this one came out last year. And then all the modern day photography on this one. So like Robert Lazar and Gilly, you've got your Highland Cows and your Whiskey Mastery team. That was all done by Matthew McCartney, which is Paul McCartney's daughter. Because he's still got a very long standing relationship, obviously, with the details. I've got the same name as well. Yeah. So these ones here, this one there's only 322 bottles, so I have the yeah, same yeah. yeah, and the rest of them are all one of a kind. So there's only one of each. I mean, it's the same whiskey, but the labels are all different and they're only one of a kind. So they're going to start popping up at charity auctions over the next few years. And have you heard about yourselves? Have you seen one of these before? Yes. Yeah, okay. 
So you've tried these ones before yeah. this one? Yeah, this one uh, more like a traditional more like a traditional size. Yeah. Yes, sorry. Now, the sheriff has been sure enough to go. Until now, people have no good. So, what's your, what's your favorite one? I really like the sheriff Very fast. It's not very classic, my house. Yeah. yeah. It's quite similar. It's, well, well, it's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's more like the 18 chair, I think. Really? Yeah, I think they make man the 18 the there. <laughs> so, when everybody's tried here, we're going to head from upstairs to our production area. I know we could spend all day in this wall yeah. if we had the time, however. Yeah, there's just so much to look at. <laughs> so, we're going to head on out. Would you like to just head out here? Thank you. And the three copper hands represent the three kind of key people that would have came together to create this, this scheme. So one of them represents Alan Shear, who was chairman of the McAllen up until 1996. One of them represents the distillery worker that would have laid the cast to rest back in 1940. And then there's a female hand that holds the bottle at the back. And that represents the hand of our current master whiskey maker, Kirstine Campbell. And she's the first female master whiskey maker in Scotland over 100 years. In. But we can see the bottle displayed at the back here. Can definitely take the time to have a little look through here and read about all the different characters as well. And then you can see it's just displayed here. And then that's the three hands that I was mentioning as well. So it comes with the three hands and in this case here. And it comes in a larger box that's on wheels because it's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, really beautiful bottle. Yeah. When everyone's ready, we're going to continue yeah. up the stairs. It'll still be here when you when you yeah. through. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. No, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. 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 So this here is our McAllen bar. We're not stopping here at the moment, but of course we'll be coming back. You get your wonderful view down into the valley. You also get your first look into our production area here as well. Now we're going to continue around the bar and we're going to head into production from the door in the far corner. Building, 
and you know, it's lots of like about it as well. It's not just whiskey deliveries that you get visiting. You get architects, you get engineers. You know, there's, there's something for everybody. We're actually going to stop here for a moment, and we're going to quickly speak about the architecture a little bit as well. I like stopping here because you get a really good look into our production area, and you also can kind of see the roof a bit better when we're upstairs, and get a nice overview of our visitor centre. So our architects for this building were a group called Roger Sturt Harbour and Partners. Now they're an architectural firm based down in London, known for the likes of Madrid Airport, Terminal 5 at Heathrow, and the Third World Trade Centre in New York as well. I do think they kind of get that airport feel as you're walking through a little bit. Now their idea behind this building was to have us blend into the landscape, which is why our roof mimics the rolling hills of Speyside. Now the roof itself is made up of 380,000 separate components of Scandinavian pine, all fitting together like a jigsaw. It's also completely weight bearing, so all these beams you see here don't actually hold the roof up, they're just there to support it in movement. We're also hurricane proof and can withstand up to 8 feet of snow. Although it's very unlikely either of those things are going to happen, it's there just in case. <laughs> so they actually built the whole roof in Germany to make sure it worked. And they dismantled it and took it over here in 300 Arctic quarries. <laughs> yeah. oh, good numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So there's only four pieces in the roof that are the same shape and size. Every other part is completely unique. Thank goodness for computer modelling. I know. <laughs> But we're going to continue, we're going to go for a look in our production area next. But as we head down, you'll really start to get an appreciation for the true scale of the building as well. So before we head into production, I do need to go over a really quick bit of health and safety. We have no fire alarm scheduled for today. If one goes off, follow myself out of the building as quickly and safely as possible. We are a working distillery, so some of the vessels we pass will be very hot. Please be mindful of this and try not to touch anything. I've also been told it's quite warm in here today. If anyone feels unwell at any point, please let me know and we can head out as quickly as possible. We can also get some water when we come out and head to the bar as well, um, if anyone does feel unwell. Um, we're going to be walking over some high grade flooring. If anyone suffers from a fear of heights or vertigo, let me know. We can pass over this as quickly as possible. And finally, photography is permitted throughout the whole tour, except when we're on the graded flooring. So while we're on the concrete walkways, it's completely fine. When we're on the graded flooring, we're going to ask for no photography. We're not hiding anything, it's just for health and safety reasons. If everyone's ready, we're going to head on inside. Can you take a photo? Yes, of course. Are you standing right yeah, here? Yeah, of course. It took Thank four, <laughs> just okay. in case. Thank you. So yeah, as 
we head down, you're going to start to appreciate the scale of the distillery a little bit more. Really see the size of it. I do think with the lighting in here, you would be able to film an amazing James Bond movie. Never yeah. <laughs> Although you would just pray he doesn't shoot anything. Here is a model of our production area which is in front of you today. So as you can see our distillery is split into four what we call pods. Now in these pods we have our mash tun, we have 21 stainless steel wash vats, so you've got seven which surround each pod, so the smaller stainless steel vessels you can see, and we have 36 copper stills. So 12 of these are the larger wash stills that you can see, 24 of these are the smaller spirit stills. So we have one wash still for every two spirit stills. So we do have a bit of an unbalanced distillation going on. But this is just something we've always done. It means our spirit can get more contact with the copper, so you're getting those flavour profiles coming through from the copper. It also helps us to collect the heavier alcohols, because we are looking for that heavy alcohol, which gives you that oiliness and that viscosity to your whiskey that we're known for. So it's giving up that kind of coating the mouth feel for it. So essentially in here, we are running three distilleries in one room because each of these pods run individually. So they're on their own kind of time frame. So you might have one at the start and say fermentation process, one in the distillation process and one in cleaning. But it means we can put these in a rotation and we can run a 24-7 production area. So I'll give you a really quick overview of the production process. We'll go into more detail as we head round. So to make our spirit, we have three key ingredients, water, malted barley, and yeast. We mill our malted barley into flowery powder called crisp, which goes into our mast along with our, into our mast along with our water. This converts our starch to sugar and produces a sugary liquid. We call this wort. Our wort goes into our wash box with our yeast. This is where the fermentation happens and where you're first going to get alcohol. Now this first alcohol is going to go into our wash stills for the first distillation. Your first distillation only produces an alcohol of about 25%. It's not strong enough, which is why we distill it for a second time to produce a much higher shed alcohol, which you can then fill into our past which you're going to Like I said, we'll go into much more detail about each of these vessels if we walk around our very few people, is it all It's 100% automated, so there's only three people that work here at any one time. It's very unlikely you're going to see them. <laughs> we have more people that work in the visitor centre than we do in the disposal yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to continue down our production. I think it is 
good to see the tip on the still use the style as obviously your new modern mock makeup. So we're gonna sorry. Okay. Okay. So so this used to be a barley heel. So the whole it's still inside, everything's still there, we just don't lose it. I'll point it out one of the windows later on the tour. No, actually I pass it as a leaf today as well. So we're going to continue through the section here. Please be mindful, some of the vessels will be very hot. And while we're on the section, again, I'm going to ask for an open top. Shop right up the middle of the stills there if you would like to capture it. You want to take a photo? Yeah. Take a photo? Take a photo? Cheers the pro. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. 
stainless steel wash bath and these can hold 100,000 litres each. So in them we add 68,000 litres of our sugary ore along with 320 litres of our distiller's yeast. So it's a liquid carry cream yeast that we use. So the yeast eats away the sugars, it ferments and it produces a fruit like beer we call wash at roughly 11.5% alcohol by volume. This wash is in our hard for wash shells for your first distillation. This is where it will produce our low wines at roughly 25% alcohol by volume. Not quite strong enough, which is why it's then split between the two smaller spirit stills. 
We're going to go into more detail about the displacer process in just a moment. But these wash backs are on if you'd like to have a look inside. So this here is a model of two different spirit stills. The smaller one is the spirit still that we use here at the McAllen. The smaller still you can see used in the second distillation. The smaller one is a spirit still you might find another distillery. I always compare it to Glen Roberts because they are known for having very tall stills. Now everyone would like to remove their hands from this bar and now we're going to see what happens inside of our spirit stills. So where I'm standing and directly opposite me is the worst place to stand. So if you move around to kind of either side, so you'll be able to see inside of them. So what you're going to see here is what happens inside our stills. They're in your taller spirit stills, as your alcohol begins to boil, it's going to produce alcohol vapors. These vapors are going to rise up the still, hit the cold or copper at the top, condense and run back down. Now this is called reflux, and you get a lot of reflux happening in your taller spirit stills. So this means that only the lightest alcohol they can be able to travel up and down the line arm. This is going to give you a much lighter mouthfeel and lighter texture for your whiskey. Now we're here in the island, we are known for what we call our curiously small stills. So in our smaller stills, even your heavier alcohol vapors are able to travel up and down the line arm. To give you a much more oily business texture for your whiskey, really going to keep the inside of your mouth, which is something that can is really And all of our stills are exact replicas of the ones that are all distilling, to help us ensure all the spirit we're producing is exactly the same. Does that kind of make sense, Roger? Yeah? Any questions at all? alcohol by volume. Very small portion of spirit, one of the finest cuts within the industry. This was represented by your clearest, purest part at the top. 
Anything above 72 is too strong, we call the core shots or the heads. Anything below 68 isn't strong enough, we call the fates or the tails. Now these aren't wasted, they go back into our spigot stills along with some of our low wines from our wash stills, so that's 25% alcohol, and they get distilled again to create more of that finest cup, or the heart as we call it. But this heart gets taken away, it gets diluted down to 63.5%. We call this our new make spigot. And this is what we fill into our casks to cure this whiskey. Some of which I have for everyone to try. So you'd like to come forward and help yourself to a glass. Now it's quite strong on the nose. It's also quite sweet. You're going to get lots of your sugars, lots of your barley, like fresh fruits coming through. If you'd like to go ahead and take a taste as well. Again, it's quite strong, but it's also quite sweet. I think it tastes a little bit like the maltiness on the inside of a Malteser. Um, but you're also going to get a lot of that fresh fruits and your sugars in there. It's strong enough, you'll probably feel it evaporate on the tongue a little bit, but you'll also feel that oiliness that I was speaking about as it kind of coats the mouth. You can also, if you give it a swirl around the glass, you can see how it coats the glass, that oiliness on there as well. There's absolutely no pressure to finish this, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. So essentially this is how every single McCallum starts out. Before it wasn't big Yeah, I think a breath of fresh air is definitely needed at this point, and it's a nice day to be outside. And that's run off from the roof, presumably. Yeah, so that's just from our irrigation system. Yeah. We're the only distillery in the world that needs to water our roof. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love here. No, snow, eh? Yes, and sometimes. Um, kind of just in like December, January, it's like I am. I mean, up on the hills, they get a lot of snow. Um, but down here, we get a lot of rain. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> a lot of rain. But that's what makes it so green. Well, exactly, yeah. But I mean, like, during lockdown, we weren't allowed to travel. All the locals would go to the top of that hill and uh, ski down. Ooh! Because there, there was so much snow on it. So we do get a lot of snow sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Which hill is that? That's Benavinus. So it's the largest one in the area. 
I think it's about 100 metres off Bina Monroe. Oh. I know, it's nearly there, it's nearly there. It's, it's the same thinking, right? Eh? <laughs> Sub Munro, should I jump up it? It's a really nice looking hill. It's, it's a really, really nice. nice. You ever get a chance to walk it? I always have people to. Yeah. So at the top of it, there's a cairn with a metal flat. And a flat tells you where the distilleries in the valley are, so you know where to look behind the trunk. It's, it's really you nice. Can, it's turned it's sense to go. Exactly. That was my lockdown challenge. I didn't have the top. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really nice. So this here is a model of the Sorelki's house that I mentioned at the start of the tour, and of course the one that we can see just out the window here. So it was built as a holiday home for Captain John Grant and his wife Elizabeth in 1700. And they've got a marriage stone which features on the front of the house here as well. Now you'll be glad to hear that this one does spin. So we're going to see the inside of the house. So this is what the house would have looked like in the 1890s. Now in the dining room on the wall, there is a portrait there of Roderick Kemp. So that's the gentleman who introduced our sherry oak season casks to our whiskey, our central founding father of the modern day Macallan. And then on the table in this room just here is what we consider to be the smallest bottle of Macallan in the world. And there is real whiskey inside. <laughs> <laughs> people this is my dream dollhouse girl. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so our house here sits on roughly 485 acres of estate mm -hmm. just over a hundred of which being bar and um, barley fields we have our own herd of highland cattle roughly 60 warehouses and we have the rights to fish on just over a mile and a half of the river spate as well So I'm afraid you can't go inside the house itself, but after your tour today, you're more than welcome to take a walk down the outside. Now we're going to continue on up our walkways. We're going to head behind our whiskey wall to our mash area again. This is where we're going to speak about our oak, our casks, and the maturation process. Yeah, absolutely fine. Yeah, what do you do? Oh, maybe on the front. Oh, Oh, Okay. I asked somebody yesterday, I was like, how do you get into drinking whiskey, you know? And he goes, oh, a friend ordered it one day, it sounded cool, so I just started drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. 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 So, of course, to get a better view of Ben, this from here. And um, just down below us, we've got some of our older style vintage warehouses. So these are all our traditional warehouses, dirt floors, casks, that three kind. Now, over to the right behind these trees is where our old distillery sits. So, it's not a production anymore, it's what we call mothball 
of stills and everything are still there, or just not in need. We finally, this white L shaped building just below us here is actually a lot of the visitor centre. So if you were here before June of 2018, that's where you would have been. Now that would fit into a lot of more nervous rooms. <laughs> and that's where all of our big teenagers work today as well. Oh. But we're going to continue around to the right and we're going to head inside of another cask here from the entrance that's on the right hand side. So as I mentioned downstairs, we use two different types of oak to make our casks. We have European oak and we have American. So what we're going to see here is a projection of our two oak trees growing. We will speak about the differences in the trees and the different influences on our whiskey. So on the left you will be able to see our European oak tree growing, on the right our American oak. Spain, Portugal, and a smaller part of southern France. They have lots of room to grow, so they're a lot smaller and thicker trunks. Compared to our American oak on the right, which is grown in the states of Ohio and Missouri, they're grown in very densely packed forests. So they grow upwards as quickly as they can to gain as much sunlight as possible, making them a lot taller and also a lot thinner. Staves. All these staves were taken down to the south of Spain to Jerez to be air dried for a year. Down to Jerez is also where all of our casks are made. So our main cooperage is called our Tavasa cooperage. The video you're about to watch will show you the cask making process at Tavasa. The reason this happens in the south, south of Spain is because all of our casks are seasoned with all our also shedding, and this has to happen in the Shaggy Triangle in the south of Spain just due to shaggy walls. It's a great place to go. You're welcome to take a couple of sets and closer if you like as well.
The initial spin landed on the end of the house there, it's time for the Edrington group, the current owners of the tower. Mm. Right. Have you seen a house being made before? No. No, no very sad. Yeah. I think it's good to see once you've seen how modern and automated their facility yeah. is, yeah. and this is still such a traditional process. Really big contrast. It's good to see. Mm. Well, we're going to continue around this way. I've actually got some different class sizes for us to have a look at. So one left to right, you've got a puncheon, which holds 500 litres, a hog's head, which holds 250, and a butt, which holds 500 litres as well. So of course, your puncheon and your butt, your kind of typical cask size, a little bit larger, they're a bit more practical. But in your smaller 250 litre hog's head, your spirit is going to have more contact with the wood, so that already that is going to get a little bit more colours, flavours and aromas coming through from your smaller casks. Of course, we marry lots of casks together to create our whisky, so this helps kind of balance it all out. Now, once our casks are made, we fill them with Oloroso sherry for approximately 18 months, and this allows the oak to absorb a lot of that sherry. Anything that's left over, we empty out, um, and we sell to food companies, and they make it into sherry vinegar. We don't sell it as drinking sherry, because there's not a demand. And so, once this cask can be soaked the sherry for 18 months, they then ship it up to us here at McAllen, um, where we fill it with our new make spirit. So, from the time their oak trees are felled, they're dried out, made into casks, um, and seasoned. It can take about five years before they arrive here. Yeah, a lot of forward planning as well. Mm -hmm. 
So have a closer look at these tasks, have a closer look at the tools around the corner here as well. When everyone's ready, we'll head off to the next section. So here at McAllen, we're very proud to say all of our whisky is 100% natural colour. So we are part of only 3% of distilleries in Scotland that choose not to use caramel colouring. Now caramel colouring doesn't affect the flavour of your whisky at all, just the colour. Helps you stay a bit more consistent. However, it does fade over time. So to help us ensure that we always have that consistent colour within our whisky, we choose not to use it. So this makes our whisky makers job very difficult, as they do have to get the colour spot on every time. Now, this wonderful Peacock tail here shows you the variety of colours that our whisky can take from the casks. Your darker, richer side being more expected from your European oak casks, your lighter yellows and oranges more expected from your American oak casks, and your clear side on the end here representing our new make spirit that we fill into our cast to ensure whisky that we tried earlier in our production area. Now, surrounding us, we've lots of different bottles of Macallan, all hosting a variety of different colours. Have a little look. You might recognise some of the bottles. You've maybe tried some of them before. There's maybe some you'd like to try. Please don't say all of them. Um, <laughs> but have a look around and let me know if you've had any of them before. And if you've got any questions. Do you, um, how long does it take to become a, what I call for a person in America? I mean, somebody who's a physical Quite a few years. Um, and then there's lots of different ways that you can do it as well. You can just start with the labs. Um, there was actually one who was a cleaner and she had a really good nose. And then they took her on the team. That was a different facility. But yeah, um, but we also do apprentices. We oh, do a maker. So he started as a sample room assistant and then we worked his way up. So he was a team. But if you're taking care of him, I was consistent. So we've got three women at yeah, it's interesting that because you were, is that in sort of, well, I noticed that the distillery was damaged quite a lot of the night was so I had to have very good or short or good or short 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 or Interesting. Yeah. 
that we might be able to have together. Ways to do Yeah, and it's a bit like if you said to say you're receiving that, but if you want them to know why you should be inviting the baby, there should be that big colour that the play or that the baby does. So it's all about their fine consistency and also for trying to have smart reps and um, unpaid the products as well. Yeah, because especially now, it's not just knowledge statement stuff that's really under producing. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got like we've seen the stories I yeah. so we've got one that's like a collaboration with Gordon Walker mm-hmm. on like the taste of the bar chocolate, smells of the bar chocolate. So oh. yeah, so they're told there to find a cast that can stand the bar chocolate. Yeah. Or find a cast that stands out from the rest and what's what the sexual symbol has. So they've got that kind of So it's mostly just knowing that the male men are based on fine behaviors. And it is good to spit it out, kind of, in wine. <coughs> <coughs> so we're going to head out of the section, but one last little bit for a food cap. So we're going to head into this little room here. Saying it, it is not a sauna. <laughs> so in here you're going to see a review from our whiskey makers themselves. You will hear the voice of our old whiskey maker Sarah Burgess and also of our current master whiskey maker Christine Campbell as well. The video will take about five minutes in total. I'm going to be just outside that door if you need anything at all, but please do enjoy. Born here, I have lived and bleed in this place. You get the smell of the sweet, sweet oak, plus the damp of the grace of pine here in the warehouse. It feels cold and very, very still. A place of nurturing. A place of peace. I am of the elements, made from nature's simple ingredients. In these casks, the new spirit made from natural spring water, the finest malted barley, the best yeast, slowly matures, influenced by the seasons and the passing of time. The freshness of spring, the warmth of summer, The change of the autumn, the cold of the winter. In here, it's all about time. I'm a reflection of my environment. A landscape of layered complexity. Individual samples drawn from hand-selected casks are all carefully nosed here in the whiskey making room. The sherry seasoned oak casks create a unique character, but with each cask we discover different notes. From citrus and honeyed vanilla, to dried fruits and cinnamon. From fig and almond, to toffee apple and caramel. From coconut to orange zest. There are so many notes and characteristics, so many variations. Distilled in the past, over the years I have evolved. Gives us all these different layers, different complexities. 
but it's the exceptional expertise of the whiskey making team that reveals the flavour quality within each cast. You taste, you know, and you listen, because they always have a story to tell. I am the result of mastering, combining intuition and precision. Every day in the whiskey making room, the team will carefully evaluate each individual sample, assessing the colour and characteristics of the spirit, letting the whiskey take us on a journey. I am a celebration of people and of passion. Often there is an element of surprise. It's not easy navigating the complexity of each cask and what it represents. It can be a challenge to fully understand the flavour combinations and how they will work together to strike a balance. But slowly, with skill and patience, the individual expressions come together. Composing each sample, assessing the levels of complexity, Thinking about the different aromas and flavours coming from, the contrasting colours, understanding how they complement each other to create something truly special. And we have an expression that is like no other, a spirit that merits to be. So you've seen how our whiskey is made, how it's matured. How would you like to go and drink some? Sound okay? <laughs> if you'd like to follow me, we're going to head downstairs to our tasting room. Did you enjoy the video? Did you yeah. Nice. Yeah. The end of the bottle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, it's good, isn't it? Uh -huh. So, what's your plans for the rest of the day? We are heading to Glenfiddich. Oh, fantastic. And then we will go to the north to get right, the ferry right. tomorrow. Sure. Ah, all right then. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, so we're going to head down the bar and we're going to head down the stairs. How about yourself, sir? What are you, what's your plans for the rest of the day? I'm heading to Glenfiddich or so. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Are you staying local? I'm staying in Highlander Inn. Oh, the Highlander Inn? Yeah. Oh, if you stay at the Highlander in December and January, obviously that's when it's quiet. It's normally £100 a night. If you stay there for two nights and drink a hundred pounds worth of whiskey both nights, you get your room for free. Oh. <laughs> so it's to get people to stay. <laughs> so you have to come back in December and January. <laughs> but it's good because you could have like, you know, 10 jams that cost 10 pounds, or you could have one that costs a hundred because your room's for free. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And how long are you in Scotland for? You mean the period? Yeah. I was in, I was at Glasgow last Tuesday okay. and I'm leaving tomorrow. You're leaving tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just oh. Going around distilleries. Oh, fantastic. Well, where are you from? South Korea. South Korea? Yeah. Amazing. Have you been to Scotland before? It's my first time. Your first time? Yeah. And do you like it? Yeah, I really enjoy yes. it. Yes. 
I suppose if you enjoy whiskey, yeah. it's the right place to be. <laughs> I really need, wanted to know how to whiskey. Mm -hmm. So I decided to come to Scotland to see myself. And because I'm driving, can I get a... Yes, we got bottles. You can take them away. Okay, thanks. That's not a problem. Amazing. So we're going to head on into this room just here. When we head in, if everybody just heads straight up to the bar. So this here is our cab of free vape, or our private warehouse here in the heart of the big story. So take some photos if you like, and when everyone's ready, you just head up to the bar and we can begin our tasting. So just find yourself a spot at the bar. Well, get yourselves two and then two, yourselves two, come these two steps. So these are different steps there, and then yourselves here. Who is driving today? One, two, three, four, okay. Bottles. And there's some sharpies if you'd like to write on the bottles as well. I'm afraid, however, only have one funnel, so you'll have to fight over it. <laughs> so today in our tasting, we're going to be going from left to right. So starting with the glass on the left, we have here is our 12-year-old double cast. Now pick it up, you can have a nose of it. So being part of our double cast range, um, have you tried this one? Yes. Yeah. Be part of our double cask range, it means some of the whiskey has matured in European sherry casks and some in American sherry casks. Your European is going to give it a little bit of spiciness, a little bit of fruitiness to it. This one is definitely more predominant American oak, it's a very light colour. On the nose you're getting lots of your toffees and your vanillas. If you have a taste of it, it kind of starts off with that creamy butterscotch, and it gets more citrus in there, finishes a slight kind of cinnamon spice at the end, but not too, not too much. This one's a very smooth whiskey, very easy to drink. This one is actually described as McAllen's breakfast whiskey. Because it's so smooth, yeah. So if you like a charm alongside your porridge in the morning, this is the one I recommend. <laughs> so this one sits at 40% alcohol by volume, so quite a low one to get started. So that is the lowest percentage that an, a Scotch whisky can sit at to be considered Scotch whisky. So we'll put the water. Of course. So we have this water pipette here. Um, it is a glass one, so you need to cover your finger, although it comes out quite fast. So just put the tiniest drop in that you're needing. Um, and do that. Just that air bowl there. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Yeah. So some of ours did go into, I believe, like a gun scrub it, um, but we stopped that for about 15, 20 years ago. And so it's purely just the tips and the whole I've got some signatures. Yes, I've got some signatures. I do like that. Did you see this? That's the air hole just there. So you need to cover it. It comes out quite soft. So just pop a tiny bit. Yeah, I always say to people, you know, there's no wrong way to enjoy a whiskey. If you like it with some water, some ice, and a cocktail, you're just not allowed to ask me for a can of Diet Coke or ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I had some do my tour once, and he told me that he liked to enjoy his whiskey in an ice cream float. Oh. Oh. Never heard it. Yeah, oh, I've never heard that before, and I was like, right, okay. <laughs> Reassured me he would never use the Callan. <laughs> made it a little bit better. <laughs> I got Cindy as well, um, and they made their own ice cream, and they made one with McAllen 18 year old sherry. I don't want to know how much that was a scoop. No. 
definitely warm sleeping. Yeah. 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 Good breakfast. That's nice. Yeah. Warm. Yeah. 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 And I'll pass the funnel at the moment. Have you managed without the funnel yet? Yeah. <laughs> You're looking more nervously there. <laughs> He's I, a steady hand, is it? <laughs> I've been doing this for four weeks. Yeah, it's not as big as it This one's a nice one, isn't it? Quite smooth, easy to drink, good one to start out with. This one in particular is actually really good in a cocktail. Yeah. So I'm going to move on to the second one. Absolutely no hurry to finish the first one, you're more than welcome to come back to it. So the second one that we have here is our terra. Now this one has a lot more European oak influence in it. So on the nose you're going to get a lot more of your dried fruits coming through, a little bit of lemon in there as well almost. Um, on the palate, you're definitely going to taste your raisins, sultanas, kind of cinnamon, ginger, cloves coming through. It's like rich, spicy, perhaps a little bit of like, rich chocolate in there as well. Um, it's a little bit darker um, and kind of finish on quite nice root kind of oak spice as well. This one is a little bit stronger. It does sit at 43.8% alcohol by volume, so it's not too strong. Definitely a little bit more than the first one. It's got a more distinctive smell, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think this one's a bit more complex in the first one. Yeah, yeah. Has anyone tried this one before? No. This is one of my favourites, probably my favourite actually. So this one's part of the Global Travel Retail range. So it's only available here or at airports or shipping ports um, around the world. So it's exclusive to travellers. Mm -hmm. And this is probably my favourite one of the range. Is it relatively new? And you've been traveling much. Yeah, that's 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 it's more, I mean, I would say it's kind of like a traditional Macallan taste, but it's mm. closer to the traditional Macallan than the mm. first one mm. because it's got more like European influence. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I'm quite like, no, I quite like the second one. Mm. Something that's a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's lighter than the original Macallan, like the sherry. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely lighter than the sherry, but it's closer to. Mm -hmm. The traditional than the first one. Yeah, it's longer than this one. But yes, so but yeah, still a bit like it still does have some American influence in it, even though there's more European. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So those who are driving, what do you think of the smell of one? Do you, yeah, have, yeah, you have a preferred yeah. smell? Which one smells better? I think the second one is de it definitely has a more complex yeah. smell. Yeah. yeah. I quite like a couple of drops of water in my whiskey myself. I just think it really helps change the taste of it. Um, so I tend to find it a little bit spicy. It helps now with the spiciness and open the flavour profile a wee bit. So there's absolutely no hurry to finish your whiskies. Please take your time. But when everyone is ready, we're actually going to head up to the bar and we've got one more for you to enjoy up there. Mm -hmm. That's why we give you the scones at the start of the tour. Scones are very good, yes. I put water in them. Oh. So you can also, you can still bottle them if you like. If you'd like to take another. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think I need to. Yeah, bottle them. Bottle them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, so not got lids, sorry. <laughs> I'll give you the thumbnail set for that. Unless you think your hands are as steady as this gentleman and want to try and find different ones. No. Okay. <laughs> very skilled at that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about taking the thumb up upstairs, they've got more up there. It's one of those things, people seem to really like when we steal them all the time. <laughs> so we just we run out of funnels all the time and constantly order in more. <laughs> but they're so handy. Mm, I think that's it's a very book. handy thing. Yeah. I've got the one that's very similar, but I use it for filling spice jars. Oh, so it's yeah. it's yeah. Um, it's more comical, but it's about the same size. Yeah, it's very easy. So when everybody's ready, we're going to head out, we're going to go back up the stairs and we've got a final round for eating for the bar. Sunday, and then we have our mastery tour, which we offer once a day on Saturday. Yes, I think so. It's just quite a while to find the day. Yeah. Yeah. So, as of May, we're now open on Fridays as well, uh, but only to pre bookings. Yeah. So, it's not like today you can't just walk in, you have to be booked on a tour. Yeah, we booked. Um, yeah, and, not, and then well, as of June, we're going to be open on Thursdays as well for tours. But again, you need to be pre booked to come into the distillery. We're at the weekend, we're fully open to the public, so anyone can walk in and just go to the bars, the brands, the tea. Um, and then through the week, we run, we run private experiences. But sir, uh, people can like book it out and have a whole to the rate themselves with it. Yeah, yeah, people have um, because we run like four day experiences, so they can only get the tour like your salads are going home, even your tour to the estate. They can actually give you even dining room for you as well. Yeah, and then you can go first lunch, it's my own Yeah, see if you can come with their side. See, just leave this thing over here. Drivers bottles. I can grab some more drivers bottles if anyone needs to stop. Help yourself with some water that's going to go to the table. I've got some water glass.
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> In the side. to match.
Thank you. Bye.